Hey everybody, Mrs. DeMyers here, and we are going to go through lesson 3.4 in our moon jelly booklet. So get out your moon jelly, moon jelly booklet, not moan, moon jelly booklet, and open it up to page 91. We're gonna start there. First of all, let's go over our learning intentions. So today, all students will apply what they have learned to construct their final arguments about what caused the moon jelly population to increase in size by analyzing multiple sources of evidence. Success criteria. I can create an argument with evidence to support my claim about what caused the moon jelly population to increase in size, and I can revise my claim based on new evidence. All right, so let's take a look at page 91 together. You're gonna pause the video, and when you do, you're gonna read over the unit question, or excuse me, you're gonna pause the video and start with the header, then you're gonna read over the unit question, the chapter question. Take a moment and read the key concepts out loud as if you are a famous marine biologist giving a lecture to a room of 100 people. And then look over the vocabulary words in the space below on the page. Draw a picture to explain or define one of the words. So go ahead and pause the video and, and do that now. Now that we're ready to go, turn over to page 92 and let's complete the warm up together. Our warm up question says the algae, walleye, pollock, and orca populations could have all affected the moon jelly population. What additional evidence do you need to determine which of these populations might have caused the size of the moon jelly population to increase? So take a moment, think about it, pause this video, write something down, and then make sure you tell your fabulous audience. Now that you've got something written down, I'm going to show you what I wrote. I wrote down that I needed the evidence about how the size of these populations changed over time to know if they could have caused the moon jelly population to increase. Think back to yesterday when we worked with the different simulations. And remember how we were changing the different levels of the populations? Well, that's the same situation here. We need to know the size of the population over time to see how it can affect the moon jelly population. All right, think back to chapter two. We created these models and we said that a change in the zooplankton population could cause births to increase. And we said that a change in the sea turtle population could have deaths to decrease in the moon jelly population. And then think back to lesson 3.4. And we did our warm up and we said that the walleye pollock, the algae and the orca are all connected on the food web. So they too can affect the jelly population, but the urchin and the kelp aren't. So those populations are not gonna affect the moon jelly population. Okay, now remember, we're looking for strong evidence and we want samples that represent as much of the whole as possible because this provides us with stronger evidence. So now take a moment, look over page 93 and pause the video so that you can do that, okay? So go ahead, pause the video, read over page 93. So now that you've read over page 93, right? You've read over page 93. What we need to do is we need to look at our evidence cards. So these evidence cards are not found in your books. You have a couple of options here. If you picked up a packet from the school, there's a printout version. If you wouldn't want to print out a copy of them, you can scan the QR code right here and it will go to your phone. And if you have the ability to print from your phone, you can do that. Or you can go online to the calendar under today's lesson and there's a link there to these evidence cards. Now, if you don't want to print them out, that's fine. You can always take a picture really quick with your phone and then just take notes on a piece of paper. You can come back to this screen. I'll keep showing these evidence cards. So there's, there's a way for you to get this done, but you might have to get a little creative, okay? So what I want you to do is read and annotate each evidence card. So take a moment, get the cards. If you can't get the cards, just pause the video right here and take notes on a piece of paper, okay? So some way, get those evidence cards and read and annotate them. Now that you've done your annotations, now that you've done your annotations, right? You've done your annotations. I'm going to show you what my annotations look like. So if you haven't done your annotations, go do your annotations. Okay, here's my card. So for the first, for the algae card, I noted that the population was stable and then it started to increase. And I noticed that there were 10 locations data was collected, but they were kind of in the same general area. Okay. For my wall-eyed wall pollock card for our fish sticks, I noticed that they took samples in 10 different locations and that these locations were really spread out. And I also underlined up here that the population was stable and then it started to decrease around 2000. So I underlined that and put an arrow down so that I would remember what I did. And on my algae card, see I have, whoops, I have my arrow pointing up here. 
Now my ORCA evidence card, I noted that the population stayed stable. I also noted that there was 10 locations and that these locations of data collection were all spread out. So if you should have something like this on your evidence cards, if you don't, you might want to fill that in now, or if, again, you can just take notes on a piece of paper. That works too. So now remember, this is our glacier seafood web here, okay? So what we want to look at is we will look at three claims now. And our three claims are the size of the algae population change. That's claim number one. Claim number two is the size of the walleye pollock population changed. And claim number three is the size of the orca population changed. So we're gonna look at our evidence cards here and we're gonna evaluate them against the claims here. So the first one, the claim, the size of the algae population changed. So I want you to think for a minute and does our evidence say, does our evidence decree, does our evidence state that the size of the algae population changed? Now remember, here's our food web here. So here's our algae population. So yeah, the size of the algae population changed. Well, how do I know this? It says right here, it started to increase. So that means change, increase as a change. So that evidence is good to go. Our claim number two, the size of the walleye pollock population changed. So right here on the evidence card, it says the population was stable and then started to decrease. So yeah. The walleye pollock population changed. Now our third claim says the size of the orca population changed. And again, this is all relating to how could this could affect the moon jelly population. So we're looking at the claims that the algae population somehow affected the moon jelly population. We're looking at the fact that the uh, walleye pollock population somehow affected the moon jelly population. And now we're looking at the claim that the orca population changed and this affected and the orca population change affected the moon jelly population. So our claim says the size of the orca population changed, but our evidence says something else. Our evidence says the population stayed stable, that there was zero change. So this right here tells us that this claim is not a good claim because the evidence does not support it. The claim says the size of the orca population changed. The evidence says it stayed stable. So next thing I want you to do is I want you to rank your evidence cards. So for me, I put number one is the walleye pollock. And I put that was my best piece of evidence because it was spread out and there was 10 locations. My second one I put was the algae is number two, because again, there's 10 locations, but they're kind of in the same spot. Now, my evidence card number three, it's good evidence, but the problem is it doesn't correlate to the claim. So the claim says the size of the orca population changed, but the evidence card says it doesn't. So we're just going to toss that guy out because in reality, we cannot use that claim to, to talk about and discuss the moon jelly population because the evidence says the population didn't change. Now, I want you to take a moment, look back to lesson 2.7, and you should have your evidence cards with your annotations on there. And I want you to think about this evidence and figure out if you can use this to support either claim number one or claim number two, that a change in the algae population or a change in the walleye pollock population caused the moon jelly population to change. So if you need to, pause the video and take a look back at your cards from lesson 2.7. And those are on page 69 and 70. Are you ready to go? We are going to do our final argument on the moon jelly population. So turn to page 94. All the directions are there and I'm gonna walk you through it right now. So you're gonna to choose to support either one or both of the claims on page 94. Now remember, our claim number one says a change to the size of the algae population caused the moon jelly population to increase. Claim number two says a size to the walleye pollock population caused the moon jelly population to increase. So those are our two claims. Now remember, claim number three is not valid because our evidence says that it couldn't happen. Our evidence says that the orca population did not change. So once you've decided if you're gonna do one claim or two claims, you're gonna talk about your evidence. So your evidence is your evidence cards. Think about your models. You can even think back to the food web. You're gonna explain how the evidence supports the claim. Make sure you use your vocabulary terms. If you're not sure, you don't remember, just look back on page 91 and they're right there for you. And if you get stuck, look at the food web on page 92 and think about what eats what. Where do the consumers get their energy storage molecules from? And look carefully at your evidence cards. 
and you're answering the question, how do I know the claim happened, okay? Now, go ahead and pause this video and write your argument. And if you need a few sentence starters, I've written some for you below. The first one is my claim is blank. Another piece of evidence supporting my claim is, the evidence that supports my claim is, and this piece of evidence supports my claim by. So you can use those sentence starters interchangeably and come up with your own. So go ahead, pause the video and write your argument. Congratulations on creating your final argument. We're gonna take a moment now and create a final model modeling the moon jelly population increase. So what I want you to do is take a moment, pause the video, and read over page 96, okay? So pause the video and do that now. Now that you've read over page 96, I want you to take a moment and think back to lesson 2.7 and think back to the models that we created regarding the decreasing deaths in the moon jelly population and the increasing births in the moon jelly population and how the zooplankton and the leatherback turtles related to those. We're gonna do the same thing again. So take a moment and look at page 97. In your argument, if you address the claim that a decrease in the walleye pollock population caused an increase in the moon jelly population, I want you to take a moment and fill out this model. And again, the question we're asking is, how is it that a decrease here can cause an increase here? So take a moment, fill out this model, and then I'll come back and show you how I filled out mine, okay? So pause the video and fill it out now. Okay, now that you have your model filled in, I'm gonna show you what I did with mine. So the first thing's first, we have our stable ecosystem here. So we have two births and two deaths, two births and two deaths, two births and two deaths, and then here's our energy storage molecules transferring from the zooplankton to the walleyes, from the zooplankton to the moon jellies. Now, in this situation, we have more births than deaths in our zooplankton population. So we have plenty of zooplankton for the walleye pollux and the moon jellies to feast upon. However, in our walleye pollock population, we have more deaths than births. And because of this, they're not consuming as many energy storage molecules. So what does this mean? This means that our moon jelly population, there are more energy storage molecules available to them, and therefore, there's more births. So that's one model regarding the walleye pollux. Now let's take a look at the algae. If you use this claim in your, in your argument, go ahead and take a moment and explain how an increase in the algae population could cause an increase in the zoo pop zooplankton population, which could cause an increase in the moon jelly population. So take a moment, fill out the pause the video, and fill out the model. Okay, so for my model here, I'm obviously showing a stable ecosystem. I have two births and two deaths, two births to deaths, two births and two deaths, and I have my four energy storage molecules transferring across. Now, during a moon jelly population increase, my algae population increases, so I have more births than deaths, which means I have more energy storage molecules available to my zooplankton population. Well, what happens? Well, there's also more births than deaths in my zooplankton population, so that population increases and provides more energy storage molecules to the moon jellies. Well, the moon jellies have more energy storage molecules, so what happens? They also increase. So again, you may have a different number of boxes than I have or a different number of dots than I have, but your goal is that you wanna show there's more births than deaths because remember that in indicates an increase in the population. So an increase in the algae population causes an increase in the zooplankton population, which causes an increase in the moon jelly population. Okay, so now that we've completed our models, take a look back over your arguments, see if you need to update anything, add any more evidence, make sure your argument is clear, and all of these instructions you can look over on page 99. So just take a moment, read over page 99, and make sure your argument is a really good argument. Now, there's one more thing. On page 100 and 101, there's another self-assessment checklist. Um, you can choose to do that or not. If you choose not to, it's okay. I recommend doing it only because it just helps to see where you're at. And remember, remember when we self-assess, that's when we're taking responsibility for our learning and it can only help us become better learners. Congratulations, you have just completed chapter three of the Moon Jelly Booklet. Give yourself a round of applause. See you later, bye.